their players. It is going to be a Lazaro in the top lane. Lopachinski in the jungle. Lazy Timecat in mid. Andrew at ADC and Karami at support. Again, interesting positions here. Yeah, so I believe out of this entire new roster we're seeing overall, only Lopachinski is actually returning from that sort of grand finals appearance. And what's doubly interesting is there's actually been another roster swap uh, tonight in the playoffs. Prior to this, Lopachinski was actually playing AD carry, his main role. Lopachinski hit mm -hmm. challenger in that role. But last split, he actually played in the jungle. And tonight, he is back in the jungle because they are starting jungler for this split, One Bob, uh, unfortunately isn't able to make it, and they are starting Andrew. This will be his first competitive match within the NECC on this team, and he's going to be playing it in the quarterfinals <laughs> up against the reigning champions. You have been hot dropped into a match. That's probably what Andrew's feeling like right now. You have been hot dropped into a match against the champions. From the, like, that is that is some big shoes to fill, and I'm sure they'll step up to the task. Right now, though, let's take a look at Illinois Wesleyan University Sword. The reigning champions coming back here. It is going to be Animosity in the top lane. Shark Eye in the jungle. Tali in the mid. Handy Taco at ADC. And Fable at support. And quite a, a lot of familiar names from this roster. Most of these guys played uh, in that group grand finals and what's kind of interesting with them as well overall is that Illinois Wesleyan University also has a lot of role swaps now they've been playing yep. these roles all split long but let's run through so top lane is actually a top laner Shark Eye from the jungle was a former top laner who role swapped for this team uh Tally uh well mid laner I mean it's in the name Talia uh Handy Taco <laughs> is a fill player who's actually filled three different roles for this squad team, he's played jungle, mm -hmm. mid, and AD carry and hit Grandmaster in all three of them. So that's an amazing achievement. Uh, Fable, who is now playing in the support role, actually played jungle in that Grand Finals up against Lopa Chinsky now in the support role and also was a bit of a mid laner prior as well. So a lot of roles has been through that bot lane. They are a very strong duo. So Andrew has big shoes to fill. And I'm actually curious because when we think of duos, we usually think of bot lane, right? Support and AD carry two people in the same lane. But now that Lopachinski is in the jungle, jungle support is a really strong duo that can work together as well and apply a lot of macro force. I've seen Karami play before in the uh, NACL Open Qualifiers back in OQ1. It was a team that I actually seen it highly, partially because I thought Karami was very mechanically good. So uh, looking forward to seeing how that works out with these roll swaps. For now though, Condors on the blue side, the Kled bat immediately against Animosity. <laughs> You got it. You got it. There's no other reason. And then the Senna, of course, to come out here on this live patch. Senna mm -hmm. did get hit in the farming center position, but mainly this is just because Senna is highly prioritized between both of the teams. I think it's appropriate to ban away. What you're most likely not going to see is that Smolder having gotten targeted a little bit in the round of Nurse's time. Again, my drop in priority. The Camille, though, still very aggressive champion to ban out because understood it could be flex top or support yeah and i think fable's actually been the one to run it a little bit more uh in that support role position he can get a lot of kill threat and can actually solo out quite a few you know squishier supports in heck i've even seen them take out jungles at time now we are seeing the quinn ban that is targeted at lazaro in the top side not <laughs> something we've seen within the necc but something he plays a lot of in solo here and surprisingly enough, we're actually going to see a Volibear ban. So Volibear has been highly prioritized, I think, in the pro scene. Uh, in the last patch, however, this patch did get touched a little bit on the early game old timer and everything. So a mm -hmm. little bit of a twinge. Still don't want to give it over. Seraphine to round things out. I do like this rounded out IWU sword ban list. Just saying everything's there. But this does leave up a namesake that is quickly napped off the table to take it away from Tali. Okay, yeah, that was what I was wondering for a second. What would be the first priority pick? Because Karma's still on the table, and Lazy Time Cat yep. uh, likes to play a lot of these sort of supportive mid laners, hence the Seraphine ban. And this oh. one, overall, this is a little bit newer for the NECC for Shark Eye. Shark Eye's not been playing it too much in NECC, more things like Lily and Kha'Zix, but he is spamming it in solo queue. If you take a look at his solo queue history, it's like just Rek'Sai, straight all <laughs> the way down. <laughs> I mean, is it red or blue? That's the thing. That's what we got to ask here. So, taking a look at this Lucian to come out here. This is... Handy okay. Taco's having some fun. I love the Lucian pickup saying, we are going to try and dominate lane. I think if you get ahead with the Lucian, it's a great way to shut down a fairly newer ADC to the roster. Maybe not to competitive, but to the roster. Very safe ADC to fall back on, though, in the Ash. Yeah, and the Ash still a potential flex between Andrew uh, or Karami, both of them 
do play it and with the wukong as well overall that's interesting because i was thinking double globals right with the talia with the ash really good for picks but now they're picking the wukong so they are still looking for team fights and we'll have to see how this kind of plays out. i think the mid game having the option to both pick safe fights as well as kind of go for these ganks plus the, the option for a team fight is good but late game it can come back to bite you if the enemy team is just dropping straight team fight and just going straight for objectives and you can see it there, I feel, even with the Ash or any other global or anything like that, the Milio is going to be enough to kind of ride that wave out, banning that one away. We are waiting on what the red side ban is there. Ban 4 is currently missing. The Olaf, though, on the other side, Condors have said, hey, that's what we want to focus on, still taking care of that top lane. It's one that Animosity and Lazaro may not be able to have perfect pickup. That is going to be uh a way ban okay so i'm curious if yeah. uh, i'm wondering if it's kind of flipped back and forth here i wonder if the way was banned by condor um as is it's coming out it was it was way it was way okay i'm i'm going a little bit crazy here and the gwen still hard focus on that top lane. yeah no the way is a support ban karami plays mm. a mean way in the bot lane so they're just kind of precluding that ash way bot lane from coming down one of the ways you can deal with illusion is just don't engage with them, right? Lucian Melio is great for poke, but if you can outscale, if you can kind of sit back and just farm from safety, or you just outrange, those are answers into it. So they're just trying to prevent that top lane kind of being the focus uh -huh. right now because we don't know for sure where the Ash is going. So Sword doesn't want to like kind of over the pinch if it's hey, not for the hey, Is that a hover or is that yeah, a lock? Your favorite yeah. chapter is in. Hey, listen, I don't care. I don't care. I see it on the screen. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. I'm happy. All right. So Vygar's coming in here into the mix, and I do like it actually into yeah. this kind of forward momentum piece. Condors are now not only going to have to deal with the early game, but also the late game of the Vygar if you don't shut it down early. However, they're going to try and negate that by just going, cool, you got to stop we'll go through it the orn to layer into those late game ornaments and then Ooh. a janna to possibly deny things like the rex side the lucian dash in it makes for a very squishy bottom lane though that scares me a little bit yeah i it's not terrible into the likes of a lucian milio if they ever dash into you just shield and kind of just walk away you can kind of soak a lot of that but Jesus. i'm just thinking later on in team fights <laughs> Janna can kind of just have anti-synergy with the Wukong, with the Orn, uh, with the Engage you're looking for. We do see, of course, the Mordekaiser being picked up as well. I like the idea. Animosity picking for something that can really bully out the Orn and still have a really strong scaling effect to match in the late game. Mm -hmm. This is going to be very interesting. That Mordekaiser R5, you and I have seen this pickup before. Sometimes it's worked, sometimes it's not, but it's got the best skin in the world. The Dark <laughs> Galaxy skin, the Dark Star skin. I love it up there. We are going to have a lot of fun, though. It is going to be a kind of pick and choose your battle. Shark Eye now on this. Rex Eye will be very fun to see the namesake come out here. Tali in the mid lane on this Vigar. Things in this game, number one, looking a little bit spicy and looking very interesting for the rematch from Fall 2023. Yeah, and overall, let's touch quickly on what these comps are looking to accomplish. Because we mentioned for yep. Condors, you know, they've got really good mid-game sort of poke and catch potential. They also have pretty strong team fighting when all is said and done. Ash, not exactly a hyper carry, but in an extended fight, she does pump out a lot of damage. And she's got really good kiting tools into the likes of what Sword has. Sword feel a bit burstier with the Mordekaiser and with the uh, Vigar and the Lucian. They are looking to take out targets as fast as they can. But what Sword has going for them is kind of good matchups in, in a lot of ways, right? Mordekaiser will be able to duel out Orn will be able to outscale Orn as well in the sort of 1v1 situations. Vigar, infinite stacking. So it does feel like Sword, I think, got a lot of individual counters, and we'll have to see if it's enough to overcome the team fighting later on that Condors have drafted. It's quite surprising to me, though. I, it's been a while since I've seen a Ignite on an ADC, but I love it. <laughs> I, I'm so used to seeing flashing Ghost on my screen. It's, it's the go-to. And yeah, it is Ignite. It makes yeah. sense in the hands, especially with this early level 2 pinch. If you can go ahead and pick it up after this next wave, you can see how hard this bot lane is shoving. And that's why we do kind of want to watch it. This bottom lane will be very fun to watch. The explosiveness or maybe non-explosiveness of how it wants to break down both junglers on the top side as well being tracked on either end means that the spot lane is fairly free for the next minute or two to have a little bit of fun. That's going to be a little bit of a dash in, and Karami is the first one to eat a little bit of that damage. Yeah, and for Karami, as the Janna, one of the reasons why we don't see her as much is partially she's not as forgiving. Shields, generally, you have to be proactive about them compared to the heals, which is reactive. Shark Eye hovering around the mid lane. Do they know? I saw a ping come down, but I didn't see any wards. 
Mm hmm But with that uh, Ooh, nice. E level 2 on the event horizon, it's a perfect flash out. Timecat saying I'm wasting no time ensuring I am safe. Yeah, but you can't be lazy anymore in that mid lane with your flash down. Timecat has mm -hmm. to be really careful about being able to track where this Rek'Sai is or else Shark Eye would always just come back and redo that exact same gank without the flash. Talia, well, yeah, if you ever get caught by the baby cage, <laughs> you're done and dusted. It's a painful notion. I, I know it all too well. I love it. It's one of the most OP uh, skills in the game, I think. It's also very silly to watch someone try and walk out of it and be like, oh, how to get stunned. I'm like, it's, it's a cage. Like, <laughs> you're kind of stuck in there. I'm sorry. It's how it goes. However, Handy Taco and Fable, trying to get some early vision, understands that Lopachinski will be down here shortly, trying to drop a ward early, say, hey, that's where we're going to be. And a hawk shot in response, Andrew and Karami, keeping track of where this Rek'Sai is going so far this early game, laying into this kind of simple situation. However, it is Lopachinski to actually be the first one on this scuttle and the first one to take it. Sharkive conceding this fact. Yeah, interesting that Sharkive's not even looking to contest this, especially when Handy Taco and Fable actually have this bot lane pressure, right? Like you've got the Lucian Milio, you're winning out early. Look at Andrew and Karami's health. It's not super high. Normally, I would actively want to try and contest this. So... Sword, hey, you know, they're doing well in their lanes. They do have small CS leads, so it's not the end of the road by any means. It's just maybe not the, the full-on pressure. And it is a best of three, so it's... Yeah, maybe they're just warming up a little bit, just testing the waters out. <laughs> Give themselves some time. You know, someone's still grabbing their tea. Someone really wants to go for a stretch. It's just the... Uh... You know, I, did, I didn't do my extra CS exercises. Handy Taco, though, says, Andrew, you're in trouble. And this is what I was kind of worried about. You can see those HP bars. You pointed it out earlier. Andrew and Karami do have to be a little bit worried about what trades they do take and which trades they dislike. This is the regank in the mid lane, though. The Unraveled Earth is going to be a danger. Ooh. As Timecat just barely gets out. Lopachinski going to come in. Shark off actually quite low. He wish the oh. ball was different, but Tali flashes in for the kill. That flash that wasn't expended will also lead to your demise as Lopachinski flashes in to get the revenge but first blood and seven stacks over to Tali. Yeah, I mean it's what we kind of called for right like you wanted to regank that mid lane Shark Eye and Tali go right back and do it good response from Lopachinski though to at least be able to answer back but I will say I think a Vigar feds the oh wow scary wrapping around the dive? I mean, this is just a dive that you have to do. You knew Lopachinski was coming in. You saw him afterwards. You do pick up the kill. Fable is actually sprinting for your life. Fable's going to get away, which I am quite surprised that you almost had a double kill, but still securing the kill on a priority target. Lopachinski grabbing two from mid to bot inside the top side. We're seeing a little bit of the realm of death, but that was more, I think, just to be annoying. I can't believe Fable got away, and so lucky to lazy it, time catch. It, it, it wasn't getting away. There's a difference. It was <laughs> it was allowed to go away. Now the gang in the mid lane is not allowed to happen because time cat is forced to die. Another fire sacks in Tali's pocket, but 300 gold to Shark Eye. Okay, so let's take quick stock of what we've seen. We're only six <laughs> yeah. minutes into the game, and we're already at five kills. So a lot of action happening here. And what's interesting is for Condors. All the action is coming off Lopachinski. He's the one making things work, mm -hmm. but the lanes themselves aren't in great situations. Bot was getting hammered. Mid is actively getting hammered. And top, well, sure, Lazaro is still alive, but he is on the losing side of trades, and animosity will scale harder. Sword, on the other hand, sure, again, Sharkhive is making things happen, but they are getting massive lane advantages. And so I'm getting a little bit concerned for Condors about how they're going to play out the rest of this early game. There's still another good, like, what, six and a half minutes, uh, seven and a half minutes before we hit that sort of 14 minute mid game mark. And there's no way that you're banking on an Orn to get you through this late game. Like, you know the Vigar is going to be really frustrating to deal with. You know that the Mordekaiser is going to steal one of you away in late game. It's painful. It is painful to get bopped on the back of the head. If we don't see moves made outside, I'll be very oh. interested. Weaver's wall goes up, though, as Tali with no mana is in a dangerous, dangerous spot trying to run away from those okay. shifting stones at the seismic shove. A final stone slung, though, and just an auto attack to the back of the head. Timecat, lazy enough to throw autos all the way to a kill. Really good punish from Lazy Timecat, knowing that, hey, Baby Cage mm -hmm. is really long cooldown, 20-odd seconds uh, in the early levels, and saying that, oh, it's down. I go in on this. Now, I don't know if Weaver's Wall was necessarily needed to be the end gauge, but <laughs> you got the solo kill. So that's good enough. Unfortunately, in a macro sort of view, that kill is not going to result in anything more. No objectives to take on the map right now, and Tawi did have the TP to get back in, so no minions denied either. More than happy, but 
Fable. One that we said we wanted to watch here in the spot side. Interesting to see how Handy Taco and Fable deal with this bottom lane. Straight up 1v2ing in the backside, forcing Andrew and Karami off this wave. And it's actually creating a disgusting CS advantage. Right now we are looking at about 25. And I, I expect that to continue to be worse on the top side, though. Now we get the call of the Forge God, and Lazar is oh. a little bit late on the beat. One more punch can do more. it, though, but Animosity, more than enough to be down. That'll be a solo kill in the top side. Looking at the bot, though, when one punch goes, it's a one-two straight, and we'll see how it goes. Andrew on the backside gets a little bit of shield, Karami, but it's quickly going to get it out. Shark Eye going in for the dive. A quick little punch as Karami is not level six. No monster to help, and they're just going to kite it out. Lazy Time Cat going to try and help out. Lopachinski watches as Shark goes down, but it's still a two-piece. Now how many are they going to get extra but Chinsky going in for the Cyclone. How many more can they pick up Tali now running for their life? But it's Shark Eye to bite back. It's a three for two. But a turnaround by Time Cat. Three for three. Make it four. But down in the oh. ground you go. Final auto attack comes out. It's a double kill for Shark Eye. From downtown. No minions though to hit. So Shark Eye will live. And overall, it's Sword to come out by one. And sure enough, although sure, Sword is doing well individually in lane, but the Condors will not go down without a fight. They scrap at every single turn. And considering that they didn't have the Weaver's Wall, Orbital, in the mid lane, great rotate down from Lazy Time Cat. They minimize their losses, but this bot lane is an issue, Orbital. The fact that Andrew and Krami are now getting dove pretty much on repeat, that's not mm -hmm. going to get better. And even with the Monsoon to kind of reset and heal up a little bit, the cooldown on that's long, and I'm going to be honest, resetting a fight is not necessarily favorable for the Condors, because Sword is the one who actually is very bursty and will be pumping out damage in rotations rather than in oh a sustained my God. fight. <laughs> you can see it there. You can see it there. 1,200 yeah. difference right now. That that just puts into favor what you were talking about. Handy Taco and Fable are straight up chilling like a villains. It's an Essence Weaver, right off rip. Now Lopachinski trying to help out. Sandy Taco actually goes in, but realizes they might be in a little bit of trouble. Shields up, but oh they don't look the auto-attacks are not flying as fast as you actually thought. Fable was out trying to do defense duty, Ooh, and Handy Taco you? dashing back in, and there it is, the final auto-attack. Handy Taco says, you yeah, set up a little bit too far. It's a straight up 1v2. You know, Fable was there, there for the support. Yeah, and that's the thing we're talking about, shields versus shields, right? The fact that Karami yeah. has to be there to shield first, whereas Fable, Fable can run off, drop a ward, and come back and heal you, and you're a Okay, Fable playing with fire against Lopachinski here. <laughs> uh, but we're looking into the mid as dances are all around. Fable, though, getting quite low. Another knock oh. was going to land. Lopachinski eating the full charge of the calling. I'd ask Ford to try and help out. Ward goes down. It looks like he might have it. Tali in the mid lane was able to find a kill. Oh. It's death all around. It's a flash. Oh, no, save. Karami. You can't flash. Auto attack. Karami is about to fall. No monster to help you out. Red buff burning away. Shield is going. No, you what? lost it. Handy Taco. No. No. Hubris all the way around as you lose out another kill. You know what? It's traded back and forth. <laughs> it's traded. Remember, earlier Fable was allowed to live. Handy Taco, respect, respecting the supports, allowed to do what they want to. But why? Why respect the support? You knew. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Tally literally just took out Daisy Time Cat in the jungle and actually saw Andrew as well. So. Hany Taco should have known that there was going to be no repercussions whatsoever if you wanted to keep pushing. I mean, still, you're 4-2-2, two two, so you can't argue with that. If you want to take a bit of a break, you're still going to be fine. <laughs> Sword is starting to run away with this game and the scaling as well. Orbital, we talked about Orn scaling, but it's being matched by the Vigar and Tally right now. I'd love to see how many stacks he's got because it's probably a lot. It should be a decent amount. I mean, you're closing in on probably like the 80, 90 if you are farming up on your regular stacks and as well as the three kills and assists. That's what, uh, already 30 in the bucket just straight from KDA. Feels great. You're having a blast. And the fact that Shark Eye is allowed to kind of do what they want, 3 0 oh, 2. Already has Merc Treads, by the way. You're not getting away from this Rek'Sai as nicely as you would like. However, what you can do is meet in the enemy jungle as Lobachinsky is trying to steal away a camp. You can see it here uh, on the mini map. Because this dragon's coming up, you're just trying to duke it out. And with things going down, Condor's first one on the dragon. And this is interesting if Swords are actually going to contest this. Because they are really individually strong. But the team fight is still a place where I can see Condor's potentially having a chance. We've seen Lopachinski have such great effect. Tao, oh, just wow. just them out with the baby cage. Oh. Oh, and that hurts. That hurts. A single Q Through dropping shield. about 10% is painful, and that means they're actually allowed options in. Shark Eye getting knocked back, and that's going to be a okay. little bit of a shockwave. 
That's going to be Spike going down. Lobachinsky is good, but the re-engage is huge. Remember, oh. Dragon is gold, <laughs> but gold is forever. That's a dash short. Another shot in the back. It's a two guns wield heavy. Double kill for Shark Guy, but it's four dead for Sword. Like you said, gold is forever orbital. And, you know, props to Lopachinski for having presence of mind in that fight to be able to get that dragon. But that baby cage from Tauli was just mm -hmm. beautiful to watch to catch three. And you saw the damage from just that meteor that he's calling down. That is an issue for Condors. And suddenly that team fight chance that I was saying they might have. Yeah, I don't fancy their odds anymore. It's got to be a perfect engage. You've got to find the carries. If either Tally or Handy Taco, one of them doesn't get caught in the initial engage, they can carry these fights. It's horrifying to think about that. We're saying they can carry a fight at 13 minutes into the game. Impressive stuff from Sword, earning their namesake by killing the likes of the Condors. The thing is, it's still 4v4. We still haven't seen Lazaro or Animosity join these fights, which is true. Scary. It, it is really, really scary. Lazaro being shoved into the nether realms as you're about 3 CS down and having to flash away even under towers. Animosity is like, cool, I got a summoner spell for free. Yeah, and with the lanes that Sword had drafted, we already said that they kind of had winning lanes almost, it feels like, across the board. I yep. almost want Lazaro to just sack this lane and say, get out. Like, take my turret, I don't care. Because if Condors want a team fight, then you're looking at Lopachinski and Lazaro to kind of be that big AoE CC that buys you the time to pump out their damage. And it gets Lazaro out of a very abusive relationship. Animosity is just pumped down. <laughs> and once that Leandris gets completed, or Riftmaker potentially, I think you could just go Riftmaker at this point. Um, yeah, you just... That, that lane is un, un, completely unplayable for Lazaro. I mean, but where are you going to go? How much are you actually going to help with the Coley to the back of the head does 50 half chunk, by the way. Lopachinski is going to come in. Arrow lands on top, and it looks like they might have found their engage. Handy Taco went too far underneath the Tower of Fable, running for their life, but the Weaver's Wall is about to cut you off. Not long enough to fully cut you off, but Flash enough there. to get Lazy Time Cat in. Flash out from Fable, another shard to the back of the head. And Amasi, though, still killing on the top side. 2-0 in solo kills for the Mordekaiser. One for one, and these are not equal orbital. Sword was pushed up nope. in that top lane. They will get damage on this turret. Whereas Condors, they still have to push out the bot lane. They were shoved all the way under their turret. So again, Sword coming out ahead just from the aggression, just from the advantages they've already accrued, and just never letting up. And we said, right, this bot side was one to watch for Handy Taco and Fable. A story duo here for IWU Sword. And Andrew trying to step up to the plate. I honestly, I can sit here and say I don't think Andrew did anything inherently wrong. It's just Handy Taco and Fable were like, we're going to bully you into oblivion. And it hurts so bad when you notice that. <laughs> yeah, and part of it, of course, is the composition. There's a reason why Lucian yeah. Milia was banned uh, very heavily at pro levels of play throughout most of the early Season 14. It's because they can yeah. do things <laughs> like this. And or I just have to mm -hmm. question sort of the Janna answer. I don't think yeah. it was the support you needed to be able to survive this land. I don't think so either. Fable, though, might not be able to survive this for a man shoved back into the wall as it seems Condors have found their mark. Listen, if you're behind, step number one, get kills. Even if you're not getting too much else after, at least you're getting gold. Still answered in the mid lane, though, by Tali. Yeah, and now overall, it gets just tougher and tougher for Condors to play this. I think Sword has done incredibly well. They are winning every mm -hmm. single lane. So the world's their oyster. How do you want to play this? Well, if you want to keep like split pushing, as long as you've got vision down to prevent ganks, you're kind of good to go. If you want a team fight, we've already seen that they're stronger. Uh, and I think the ideal sort of situation for Sword at this point is with these outer turrets down, just go with the 4-1 split push, leave Animosity on an island. If you can hold Orn away, that's probably the best case situation. You know you win out the rest of the fights and just kind of play between objectives and the sort of mid lane pressure that you can put down. Um, or if Dragon's the objective you want to play for instead of Herald or Baron, pardon me, then play towards that bot side of the map and go for the widest possible angles you can. Go wide, do whatever you want to, and uh, have a bit of fun behind it. You're in game number one and you have about an 8k lead. You're doing great. However, the Dragon Condors are looking at an almost a desperate feature. They are two Dragons up. And a Chemtech Dragon, I mean, not the greatest in the world. You don't really have the HP to sustain the soul. Still would be nice to get it off the table. But the warding from Sword are like, yo, you ain't touching this. Take a look at that vision, by the way. Dominated yeah. 
by the side of Sword. The entirety of the coastline is gone. An arrow down the road, though. Ooh. It's going to be Taco. Unfortunately, dashes in, and that arrow easily secures that kill. Lopachinsky, I wish you would have given it over, but it's still a kill to a primary member. Another cyclone to come out here. Boot back. Lopachinsky looking for a bit more, but guess who's here to help out? Animosity saying one of y'all's going to die, and you ain't going to like the result. Dragon. Now start off on the back, and it still is a 45, by the way. You were talking about perfect engages. Lazaro might be able to help out from long range. Animosity going to run away. A little bit of a shove. As Animosity is taking a white low, but Shark Hive dashing yeah. off the dragon. Going straight to the back line. Knock him in the back, though. As Shark Hive is all alone. Monsoon to come out to try and keep everyone healthy, and it looks like it might have worked. However, down. Animosity is on a killing spree, and the dash oh. is there. Animosity goes straight in the middle with the best Q, but you don't really have the HP bar any longer. Tali now wanting away. Event Horizon is now down, and no more meteors to drop. Q's also down, but with the... With the jungler down, it looks like Dragon is just going to be reset. I don't think Condors can do much else. They were able to get kills, which is very, very proper. But Taco. Andy Taco about to get a little bit handy as well. It looks like the Condors might have to stay alive. You can get a Miracle Steal, maybe. Maybe that's what you're looking for. I don't think it's going to happen. It's Condors. They'll take their kills and leave. Yeah, and overall, what I want to highlight, too, is that was a 4v5 fight. For sword mm -hmm. the entire way, Condors knew that they they got the pick on Handy Taco, which is absolutely great, and then they opted into the team fight with a numbers advantage, but they still couldn't win. And to me, that's a sign that this game is kind of past the tipping point. I don't see yep. a great way for Condors to get back into this. I mean, sure, you can keep looking for picks, right? That's always a possibility with Talia and Ash on your team. But the problem is what happens after the picks, and how many picks do you need to consecutively get to actually bring <laughs> this game back to even? Uh, well, one of those might be Handy Taco again, as uh, they are out in no man's land, and no. Arrow from downtown is not going to land, but look at this dashing, a flash out to the backside, but Cyclone <laughs> is up. It looks like you might be able to get it, but Karami can't do much. A little bit of a pop as Animosity joins the fight. Help. Lazar going to flash over the wall. Andrew now in a dangerous spot. As Fable wants to run down the seed, the ADC mission. Handy Taco lives at the expense of Lopachitsky's life. Yeah, and overall, that wasn't the pick you thought it was, because Fable was actually nope. in the back pocket of Handy Taco this oh time. Oh my god. Karami, oh... The shark is hunting oh, no. for blood, and the water is able to find it. No claw from over the wall. But these simple kills, remember what we talked about at the beginning? Condors were getting kills for kills sick. Every time uh, IWU Sword get one, though, it feels like they're able to push a little bit of tower damage, a little bit of a lane somewhere on the map. Yeah, I just pushed a lot of damage into the lane. Over the yeah. Lizardo actually stepping up here. Oh, and they found okay. Handy Taco. Handy Taco has been playing a little bit uh, on the nose there, so I'm a little bit worried. However, Animosity goes straight in. It's says, fine. hey, I want to do it out. Realm of Death, Lobachinsky will fall. That's your main DPS that had seven kills to the name. Now six deaths in. Lazaro Ooh. eating a lot of pain. Another shove comes out. As honestly, Lazy Time Cat being able to stall out some of these fights is nice. Still, though, Tower falls, and it's going to be IW Sword that continue to open up this map. And again, I want to praise Condors for finding these pixel rolls, but it literally does not matter because you need to find both Tally and Handy Taco in the same yep. fight. Right now, Animosity is being an absolute bulwark. You're seeing the healing from the Rift Maker keep him alive while pumping out the damage. And it just feels like hey, if either Tally or Handy Taco is around, they just clean up the rest of these fights. And you see Condors have to repeatedly disengage, even if they have the numbers disadvantage. We are just past the 20 minute mark orbital. Baron just spawned. And we're already looking at a nine and a half thousand gold differential. That is absolutely massive. I'm scared, RMC. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to see more gold. Go like I'm scared for what happens to the Condors if they lose another larger fight. If things just kind of go kaput, you don't really have much else to defend. And this Baron is all but the side of swords. You can see it here. Warding vision going down. Condors trying to get at least something to see in there. At this point, you're pretty much just hoping to rely on those scribes, which are still down for a couple seconds. Baron, though, started up a minute after it spawned. Sword, looking for a quick end and a quick okay. close. TV coming in here, Event Horizon is currently down. Shark Eye going into the backside. No one else really able to follow up. Lazaro is going to run interference. Shark Eye trying to run away, and the arrow's going to slow down, re-engage from Sword. It looks like they oh. might have got it. Yes, you're able to burrow down, but it doesn't really find the kill. And Condors have found an amazing shutdown and kill once again to Lopachinsky. Now, is this bait? <laughs> That's the question, because yeah. Condors actually set up the Baron, I think everything backfires. I Good. I'm happy that they showed restraint. They didn't try and do that in the face of three and a half members of Sword. Uh, and again, good pick. They punished the fact that Sharkhive didn't actually have follow-up. The rest of 
Sword weren't able to quite get in there. And it doesn't change the nature of the game right now. It is still Sword firmly in the lead. But for Condors, anything that buys them time is a good situation when you have been kind of falling behind and just getting out pressured everywhere. And I, I would say it does worry me a tiny bit, but Tali, Tali? Like, this is happening again. This is actually the fourth time this has happened. So I was just about to say that we're starting to see these picks come along because uh, we're seeing Sword actually almost willingly putting themselves in solo situations. First time, it was a coincidence. It was a mistake. That's fine. Handy talk. We said it wasn't there. I saw the fourth time. I think Sword have just been kind of caught unawares. I know you said, RMC, that, hey, it doesn't really matter right now. But these are starting to add up a little bit more as Condors actually start the Baron. TP is available on Tally in 15 seconds when he is back up. They don't have enough damage to take this over. It's such a slow take. It's not even a half elf yet. They don't. And I mean, that's going to call it off. However, the little bit of play. Oh! oh! Big air ball. Lazaro lets it slide. But they're going to go back to Baron. I think only for a moment, though. The arrow volley slows them down, and Masi oh, uh, is going to slam down and draw him in because Tali's TPing in. It looks like they've done it, but look at the cycle. Look at the damage. Handy Taco is almost low. Lobos just keep trying to solo him out, but there is double kill. Making it a third. Handy Taco is alive. The shield is done. You know what? I rescind my statement, RMC. I should have never doubted IW Sword because they cleaned up the fight. 5-0. I won't say it was clean over though, but they got the job done. <laughs> and it is a clean <laughs> ace as you cold. Five for nothing. Baron on the table, Dragon on the table, and four Condors. Man, you got a feel for them. That Baron, like I said earlier, it was bait. That didn't change even when you were telling <laughs> down. You just don't have the damage you need to take it yep. right now. Look at the damage sources for Condors, right? Andrew's got a Kraken Slayer. Good, great. But no, they have the Rune King to follow up. Not a lot of, you know, attack speed. Oh, Tally, is nobody gonna fist bump Tally? Oh, no. we're, we're depressed now. We're just sad. Fist bump <laughs> all your fist bump your teammates, guys. Like, that's the least you can do, right? That, I think that's the that's no, the totally least. No, Tali got picked. No fist bump. <laughs> uh, okay, that's actually fair. <laughs> all right, listen. No fist bump for someone that sacrificed their life to TP back in and try and help out. Either way, sword. Get both major objectives on the map. They are now free to do whatever they want. They're right back on track to close out this game without really any resistance. And I'm a little bit concerned as well for Condors. Uh, they're down 9,000 gold right now. It's almost 10,000 off the Baron take. Uh, you're up against a Baron up team. And I don't think you have enough wave clear to actually clear this out. Lazy Time Cat is about it. And with the Baron buff in tow, uh, it's just so difficult. <laughs> like, one spell rotation probably mm -hmm. won't clear the wave. So somebody's got to step up. And if you're not careful, you get hit by a, a claw from Animosity. Uh, that could spell death. The baby cage comes out. You just got to walk away and, you know, pray that nobody gets tagged by it. It's, it's looking even We've been saying it's looking rough, but it's just kind of going from bad <laughs> to worse right now for Condors, and that's just how the game goes when a good team knows how to snowball. I like it. We're seeing why IWU are the reigning champions on the Champions Division back in fall 2023. They're bringing yeah. that same sort of cohesion, oh, that macro-style gameplay. And I mean, I, I give a huge a lot of credit to their coaching division as well as just players themselves. They've done well. Yeah. Lomachinsky drawn into this fight again and again in a 1v1. You may be strong, but you're not strong as Animosity. The rest of the team oh, there no. to back it up as a couple shots go down. Lomachinsky actually tried to go back in, but the <laughs> shove is only going to do neutral amounts of damage. Turn around, though, as Milly goes out. Another baby cage lands. A meteor from the high grounds means the claw brings it in. No, a TP no. super late from Lazaro as you had to run back and that leaves it for Sword to take the base. Ornhorn from downtown, you don't miss it this okay. time. You are able to get a kill, but I mean, really, how much else are you going to get? Nexus Tower getting beat on. Tali wants to farm up more stacks. Flash out by Lazaro. Shark Eyes saying, let's retreat. And it looks like they're going to leave this okay. base as is bot side. Damage and bloody, but Condor's still alive. Truly, Lazaro embodying better late than never. That horn <laughs> horn, the call of the Forge God, sniping Handy Taco, actually just saved the game right now. Yep. For a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's still an that bot side. That's still an ingress point for Sword, and they can continue to go for that 4 1 split push if they want uh, up on that top side of the map. Dragon coming up in two and a half minutes. I'm going to be honest, I don't think it matters whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to see Soul if Sword really want to push the pace in this game. I was talking about earlier, hey, you know, Sword were losing a member every so often. It felt like five consecutive pickoffs, and I was like, hey, maybe there's a glimmer. If Sword aren't able to kind of group up, that would be a difference. They've done it. They grouped up. They've already gotten over that hump. We're now hitting those large marks, because guess what? My big boy has gotten the Rabadon's death cap in the back pocket. <laughs> Tali is not dying without taking at least one person with him, and that's 
golden right there. If you take out one, you've done your job as a Vigar. Handy Taco, though. Ooh. Come on. I just talked y'all up. Fine. Please don't. Okay. Just solo him out. Just solo him out. <laughs> just solo him out. Handy Taco. Slang Wukong. Lazaro in a dangerous spot. Now, this could be the final fight. Weaver's Wall, though, to slow everyone down. Very appropriate right now as uh, you see animosity just jamming out. And again, same problem with that Weaver's Wall as I said with the China Monsoon. Yeah, resetting a fight. You're stopping the fight. That's fine for IWU Sword. Mm -hmm. They are waiting for cooldowns anyways. So it's just like, okay, you want to reset the fight? We'll happily take it. We'll come back in for the burst. And speaking of which, Primordial Burst is still available if Tally can find the catch. Oh, oh that's easy damage. Karami can't do nothing. Monsoon is gone. Lazy Timecat running for their life. The Shark Eye dives in. No kill to be had, but look at the shred. Front to back is so true oh, as mid so is going to fall. Animosity underneath the tower now gains stats out of the ord. It's one of the most damaging spots you can be in. Lobachinsky though, going to try and help out. Arrow three firing in the back line. And it looks like the side of Sword are a little bit lower than they would really like. Lazy Time got trying to throw out a couple shards. Really, it's do you want to keep fighting or not? Animosity so tanky, by the way. Those ord stats are massive when you kill them in the Death Realm. You go ahead and back away, though. You say, hey, we don't have to. We have a late game composition. We can do whatever. <laughs> As it is still an excess hour to fall. The base is in shambles right now for Condors. Condors are in shambles right now. <laughs> the, the one saving grace that keeps getting them is they keep finding Handy Taco somehow in the chaos. It's like yeah. the main fight is over, and then something just hits Handy Taco. And there's a team that comes and takes him out. And there just isn't enough physical damage for Sword to quite end it but it's still a victory lab for swords right now they are still doing incredibly mm -hmm. incredibly well um and they are still super strong in the front to back fight right now dragon uh, coming up in about 10 seconds condors are kind of in the area and i'm not sure they should be it's not soul i why would you even try at this point you could try and sack lopachinsky but is it really worth it they're just gonna storm your base sort of like give us a moment give us a chance do anything karami and look over the wall. They are actually going to challenge. They're, they're going against your better judgment here, RMC. They're saying, yeah, let's challenge for this. We have everyone up. Handy Taco, this time far away from the rest of the enemy team, is actually going to take the scuttle real quick. Lazaro now stepping up to the front lines. Level 15 is able to hold on. Lazy Time Cat, though, without that spell shield. Dragon dragged a little bit towards the top side here. of the map. As this is going to be a little bit dangerous, down to about 5k. Time cat trying to get in the middle. Shark Eye diving into the back slide. And it's going to be a slaughter. Time cat is just dead. A huge Orn Horn, but is it going to be enough? I don't think so. Lobachinsky slaughtered. or almost slaughtered in the back. And that just leaves the rest oh. of the team to die. A good dragon pickup by Tali secures the third. The rest will fall. And Illinois Wesleyan University Sword will get another ace. Tally actually just straight TP'd into the base. He doesn't want to mess around. He wants to stand <laughs> over with him, though he's the scaling champion. And will do so solo in the finishing picture. Mid lane. But I don't know if Lopachinsky is a carry style player, is the problem. He's good, mm -hmm. but the champion pool, keep in mind, he's not actually a jungle main. He's actually an AD carry main, right? So the, the carry mindset might be there, but the champion pool might not, unless we see something like a jungle Twitch. I, I, it'd be wild, but hey, that is a way to carry. <laughs> oh, bro, we are into draft, and worth noting yeah. is that Conestoga Condors have opted for the red side, and I kind of like it because now you get to see what you're playing into. And we talked about having winning lanes. Well, easiest way to do that: pick a counter pick in some of these lanes. We gotta go back to uh, get us the best lanes possible. Have a little bit of fun with that one at the current moment. Bands are pretty much the same. I think this is appropriate for the side of Sword. And it's like, yo, we pretty much dominated all the way through. The Kings still have their crown, not even a little bit of blood at our feet. We're just going to run it back. For the side of Condors, this is where things get tricky. A lot of what you banned away were very priority pick and heavy situations. It felt a lot more like it was targeted. Do you actually drop those targeted bands? Do you actually sit there and say, hey, we want to allow a little bit of a shift at the current moment? It's still four for four, five for five now from game number one. Yeah, because for me, IWU doesn't really need to change anything up unless they want to pick it themselves. So if they do open something up, I was expecting maybe the Senna so that they can pick it for themselves. If not, they're good. If anything, Condors now have a rough time. And that was what I was curious about. Oh. Do we see the Kled ban come through? Because while Kled is Animosity's by far favorite champion and most played champion, at the same time, it's not something that you might be willing to blind and might not pick in the first rotation. So if anything, I expect to see the Kled kind of either picked B3 or picked in the B4, B5 position in the second round. Tally gets Talia. Mm. 
All right, listen, last time it was a little bit tricky. It was the Vigar. We also saw other people get their favorite champions. Now Tali literally gets it, and then a Good. Smolder. Okay, so I don't think we really touched on it in game number one. Smolder dropping in priority, or we did, but we didn't explain why. To grab it first round for the Condors, I think is a little bit surprising. You know what? Yeah, because on this patch especially, Smolder did get nerfed. Again, right? The <laughs> snot bubble range got a little bit nerfed. The the execution threshold got lowered even further. I believe it's six point something percent right now. Uh, when you finally get it at two twenty five stacks, so surprising that you're picking it this early, especially when you're playing to a Talia who can't control the range. Smolder has to play within Talia range, and that leaves you very vulnerable to a lot of things. I really like the Vex pickup though for mm -hmm. Lazy Time Cat. Uh, not a champion I expected him to play. That to me feels more like a Tally champion, and I'm curious what he can do with this Vex, especially against oh the likes of a Talia. Uh, at this point though, <laughs> I, I don't know if even Vex can keep everyone off. Uh... Sort of going all in on this all in. I am loving what they're doing right now. Shark Eye and Tali getting their preferred picks handy. Taco following up as well with that Kaisa a little bit on the nose. Again, you are going pretty heavy into this without seeing the supports. But with the Nar behind it, Lazaro maybe going to be looking for those uh, counter bans to come out here. Yeah, and I think Nar is probably one of the better blind picks. He doesn't have that many terrible lanes. Notably, I think Gragas and Malphite come to mind. And the question is whether Animosity plays those sort of champions. I'm willing to kind of say no. I do, however, expect a Kled ban in this second phase overall. Because one of the people that can run down a Nar in the top lane is a Kled. The early laning can be kind of rough, but once you get access to that charge, Nar becomes highly vulnerable. Smolder becomes highly vulnerable. And as good as Vex is at blocking dashes, charge is not a dash. Mm -hmm. It's just not very available. That's going to be a double up though. Jungle and support vans coming out for Sword. Saying, hey, we can't let the bomb through. I think this is very appropriate. Also got to take away other sorts of lockdown. Maybe not in the top lane, but in the jungle. And there it is. You call it RMC Psychic, yep. as always. Saying the Kled has to be banned away. You really can't let it go. And now we get to see a field of jungle and support for this side of the Condors. You can go ahead and counterpick that jungle side. Say, hey, let's go ahead excuse me, throw something in, and it okay. is going to be that Wukong. So, Lopachinsky back on that Wukong that we said did have some okay presence in game number one. Yeah, fair enough. I was hoping over and over for something like a Poppy, where you can continue creating more frontline and space for the Smolder. I do feel like that's going to be key, but the Wukong was just so effective for Lopachinsky that I have no problems, no argument uh, for this pickup right now. I do still feel like they need a very CC-heavy uh, bot laner. Nautilus has been taken off the board by Sword. I love that pickup as a oh deny as well as an engage. Okay. Uh, Cassante into Nar is an interesting one. I actually think Nar is a winning matchup into the Cassante, so... Uh, it feels like you just wanted another unit who could go diving with the Kaisa. And for Condors, uh, okay. okay. I was going to say okay. Alistar I would be a great pick, but Leona works perfectly fine too. It's great into the Nautilus. It gives you another source of engage as well if you do happen to need it. And you can always use the solo player as a defensive sort of tool as well when the death ball starts rolling in. It's... <laughs> I'm very glad you threw in those last few words because it literally is first sword. They traded out the sword yeah. for a literal bowling ball to roll at these five pins on the <laughs> other side. I mean, you look down the lane. I don't see a single person on this side that is going to want to look back towards their own base and try to play the game. They will not. They will not take backing away as a correct answer. We are getting into game number two. Illinois Wesleyan University Sword are looking to continue their win streak and push on to the semi-finals. A quick ward snapped away by Shark Eye and Animosity. Extra five gold in your pocket. Already a dub on the board. Yep, the XP kind of being shared a little bit there. We're seeing Lazy Time Cat Karami uh, walk in as well, trying to just be able to track where Shark Eye is going to be. Because to be fair to Shark Eye, I think Shark Eye did have a lot of impact early. Uh, we saw both junglers kind of look toward that mid lane, and I expect to continue seeing that this particular game. Anytime there's a Talia, you kind of want to get her ahead because she can act as sort of that secondary jungler, secondary ganker, and apply a lot of pressure to side lanes. Oh boy. Fable and Handy Taco, don't do it to him. It's no, a smolder. Not... You definitely do it to him. I know, I, I know, but I'm so sad. If this works, uh, Sword are, are gods pretty much at this point. If this works, you set behind pretty much what 
Not the Condors wanted to do Karami. Karami, you gotta check the bush. Karami, don't do this. Know. Don't do they this. Don't Andrew needs some help. Welcome to the Rumble Dome. At least someone's gonna take some damage. And actually, it's Handy Taco to start things off. Good body block oh. going in, but that's got a huge chunk of damage off of Karami's back. Andrew is relatively safe, but still HP disadvantage on either direction. Yeah, and I like that Karami did start the shield of Daybreak. I'm not sure if they held till they actually saw the engage before choosing the skill. But you still lose the trade because you're paired with a smolder, unfortunately. Yep. And because Karami takes all that upfront damage, it does mean that Karami has to play very defensively for the next little while. You actually have to be scared of those dredge lines coming through. Normally, as a Leona, you take shield of Daybreak number one, you take Eclipse number two and go, come at me, bro. You don't get to do that when you hop out. <laughs> Nope. You are on the back foot of, if anyone comes to my face, I will stun them and pray to God they don't kill me. That's what you're looking at. Both junglers, well, starting out on the top side, this is a mirror of game number one. Granted, last time around, Shark, I made a little bit of a detour towards that mid lane, broke the flash out of uh, time cat, ended up receiving a kill. So, a little bit of a difference there. Instead, going for the full clear on either side. Yeah, and I'm liking that from the Condors this time because you have that winning matchup with that Nar into the Cassante, which, by the way, Sword opted for. Animosity knows exactly mm -hmm. what he's playing into. So you don't have to worry about trying to help out the top side in the early game. You get to focus into the bot lane, which has been the oh, wow. the part that has been exposed a little bit. Shark, I have... Okay? They knew Lopachinski was there. They had double wards down, and oh, they're the going flash. to chase. However, flashback to Timecat as they get shocked up, and that's oh, a oh. huge blast cone to push Timecat out with a flash as well. Oh, Lopachinski and angle. more so, losing a lot. Oh. Another shove as his first blood gifted to Shark Eye. I don't know if Lazy Timecat was trying to play cute and say, like, I'm going to predict that you think I'm going topside, uh, you know, flashing that way, but went kind of linearly, and Fable is right there. Tally's cooldowns came back up and they find first blood and it's on to shark eye over the, the jungler we're talking about getting pressure everywhere on the map bot lane karami still taking a lot of poke as fable kind of just skirting the very edges of that turret i, I want to point out the fact that karami and andrew do not want to try and fight back is a whole difference animosity oh. now on the top side gonna eat a little bit of damage though good shove out as lopezinski can't actually stay lazaro was trying to take up with meganar but it doesn't work and animosity lives without breaking a sweat good play from animosity did use the fl uh, the ghost pardon me to be able to position a little bit better oh, boy. but now lazy time cat no flash here Really nice fear, though. You're going to lose a decent oh. amount of HP. Oh, that shove back is more than I Jeez. thought, and it's done. All right, listen. The jungle roam was a problem, number one, but this mid lane kill, it's happening again. <laughs> I'm so worried. We called for Connor Stoga. What they really needed this game was a winning lane somewhere to play through, and I mm -hmm. thought they had it with a Zara on the top side. I thought the rest of the lanes could then play kind of stable with Lopachinski kind of just shadowing and making sure that they're protected. But the mid lane shark eye smells blood Ooh. in the water, goes right back to that flashless vex. And the scariest thing, Orbital, he can do it again. I I did mention that with how many dive buddies there were, Sword can pretty much negate what Vex was hoping to lay down. You're hoping to hang on to that fear, shock everyone away, but you can just keep walking at him. One more death, and I don't think it's going to be easily come back of old Condors already feeling that pressure from game number one. Of course, big difference. It is that topside animosity not having a favorable time, as we said, but more than holding their own. Curious, where are Condor's going to start laying down that pressure? We can see a little bit of warding and vision as Lopachinski still hanging around that topside. Bot lane was frozen by Sword onto Condor, so that lane probably not the best for Lopachinski to look at. Sharkive actually in the area as well, daring Andrew to step up right now. Oh boy, there it is. I mean, you do have Flash and a heal coming out of Andrew, but it's oh. Rami, that's the main goal. You get the kills where kills go. No <laughs> gifting and respecting support lies here. You take the kills where you can get them. Yeah, I love Fable actually stepping up, making sure that if you flash, it's a waste good on Karami to hold that, but you still do go down. Lopachinski trying to find whatever he can on the other side of the map as he started up the grubs early and could potentially look for a dive once again topside. I think this time Animosity realizes you don't really have that favorable HP bar. Not only that, ults are on the table for Lazar. You gotta back away. And honestly, that's okay. As soon as I hear the rest of my team getting kills, if I'm playing mid, I'm automatically switching from I gotta get kills to I just need to survive. On the bot side, though, we are seeing Fable say, Hello, hello, Karami. You don't want to be here. Hook just going just a share wide. 
And that's fine. Neither any carry even looking at the supports there. Y'all can have your own <laughs> support all combat. We know nobody should be going down in that wet <laughs> noodle fight. And they're just trying to shove in. Once again, get the pressure, get that reset. And I'm curious to see what Handy Taco actually comes back to lane with. Uh, did buy an early tier. So despite not having the combat power, still in full control of the lane, if you can sort of get a major component built up. Mm. Okay, Caulfield's Warhammer uh, with the longsword. The level 6 spike is a place you can look to try and burst down that smolder. I mean, it might be a little bit of a far dive. You take a look, the heal and ghost is both currently up. So, Andrew, I mean, you haven't really been forced to do anything just yet. But I'm so curious. This is, you know, at, um, I want to say about six minutes in the previous game. We already had five. We're currently sitting on three. Yep. So a little bit more measured from Sword's side. Maybe that's just because, again, the Condors maybe not being as scrappy as they were before. And maybe the compositional-wise has been a little bit safer. What we are seeing is Shark again roaming into Lopachinsky's side after Lopachinsky stole a couple buffs from them. Yeah, and oh, no, last game, it was a 3-2 at six minutes. This time, it is a 3-0. Oh, so, yeah, as you kind of pointed out, it is uh, Condor unfortunately, not quite answering back the way that hoped with the composition, I think, that they've already drafted for themselves. And for now, I, I still have hopes that this top lane for Lazaro could be a place where the Condors look to break open the game. I fear if it doesn't get ahead. Uh, the mid-game roll round, that was where Sword really started to take over. I mean, they're chilling. That timer is ticking away. You could have seen as well Tali hoping to make a roam down. Not much else behind it, though. As we are seeing, again, this freeze on the bot side. You mentioned it earlier. Seeing it twice in a row feels so bad. Uh, that is, again, about a 30 CS deficit here on... I mean, this is not frozen. I think this is like two <laughs> or three uh, in a row now. I mean, Fable's running interference, and I don't think yeah. that's actually what you want. Uh, Fable's just chilling, and Karami and Andrew, rightfully so, look frustrated. <laughs> I mean, there is a small level lead, right, for Karami and Andrew over Fable. Andy Taco is level 6, but if you can try and burst down the Nautilus, if you can get a poke, maybe you can try and find an angle there. Lopachinski seeing the similar thought, is level 6 and has Cyclone. I mean, they were trying to bait this one out for quite a while. Fable running away, but Andy oh. Taco having to run the same. He in comes Tali, though. This oh, bot dear. side is a little bit different. Kill goes down, number 1, but the ensuing death might help. Oh. And that's going to be time. Got to come in and help out. Big damage to Wolf. Another tag, and then some. Andy Taco is turn. out, but Shark is going to look to finish. Another oh, Q yes. goes off, but you don't get more. It's actually a one for two in favor of Condors. There we go. That's what the Condors needed to do, and it came at a critical time orbital. They would play yeah. at a knife's edge. Literally, Timecat soaked up so many turret shots. One more, you're dead. One more auto from Sharkhive, and you're dead. But you didn't die. You win the trade two for one. And it buys a bit of breathing room for this bot lane, as well as giving kills over to Lopachinsky and Lazy Timecat, who are probably the two who are going to need to pop off in this mid game to keep Condors in the game long enough for Andrew to skill up. I give a lot of credit to Andrew as well. You knew the only way really that Fable was going to go in is if you were stepping up. You sacrifice your life for the greater good to get something back. Yes, you, you need a stack. Maybe it wasn't essential to die, but you got the job done to an extent. And now we get to see this bottom lane in a little bit more aggressive state. Now you get to take that freeze. Now you get to play with a little bit of the resources on your own. What we are seeing is resource giving though. Three grubs on either side will be the call. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that Andrew and Karami get control of the lane to free. <laughs> Handy Taco and Well, they attempted to. They attempted to, I think. I saw a little bit. I know it's smolder. You don't really freeze it smolder. <laughs> <laughs> they might like to dive, though. I think that's a much more feasible idea, especially now that Karami is 6, has Solar Flare available for the range engage. Mm. Handy Taco knows. Handy Taco's like, yo, I want nothing to do with <laughs> Karami. I love it, the D port. The D port of dreams, and you are putting a lot of CS under this tower. Okay, never mind, I lied. I'm, I'm being proven wrong every which way I turn. Still, though, another great invade from Lopachinsky. Did this on the top side, now on yep. the bot side as well. Yeah, and the, the kill threat was there, right? Like, we're just touching on the Leona mm -hmm. with the Wukong. There is a lot of burst damage available. I don't know if they actually track Fable on the other side of the map, but Fable mm -hmm. getting caught here. It looks like they did track pretty dang well. Andrew calling in Mom for a little bit of backup to gather their first kill of the game. Repeat. Cyclone still available for Lopachinsky, so the dive is still on the table if there's mm. a wave coming in. And I'm just curious to see if Lopachinsky decides to wait around. No, they're going for efficiency instead. Dragon is up and on the table with Fable down and not anywhere in the area. The Condor should be able to pick this one up. 
I like the call. I can appreciate the call quite a bit, and I mean, it's dark. There's no way to really know. You you hardcore assume because you saw Andrew and Karami wander over there. So it's a good pickup. Right now, one dragon apiece. We get to see which soul will be played for as Handy Taco looking for extra damage underneath this tower. Push up quite Ooh. far. They're actually looking for this dive. They know yeah. the dragon's being taken, and Andrew is actually just easy? dead. I actually really like that, but Handy Taco is now in a dangerous spot. Tries. To kill instinct to safety, but leaves Ooh. Fable in its own right. And again, it happens one more time. Condor completely forget about Fable, but zone in on the right target. Handy Taco, dead. He's 80 carries are just trading their lives. And I love that the Condors are first to move. Let's not forget, Tali mm -hmm. has Weaver's Wall. So theoretically, you've got more map global pressure. But we've seen both times now. Lazy Time Cat is the first to shove the bot lane. First to help out and really swing things their way and that does mean that both lady carries neither is getting a significant advantage from these sort of dives right both of them are going down neither of them's picking up the extra farm the advantage is coming from when handy taco is just alive and able to zone out andrew and karami it's such a real thing and i think my favorite part is the fact that these two mid laners have ults that the extra bushes from the soul dragon, uh, this ocean soul, completely negate. You can ward up all you want, it doesn't matter. These two are going to be flying in so quickly to bully you out. Handy Taco though, coming back with uh, that man immune. Uh, it should be the mirror mana later on. Maybe I got that backwards, I still keep getting those names except. Animosity though, we haven't talked about them in the top side. Quietly oh. holding up and actually dies under what? the tower with that and is now in danger. Maybe not so comfortable with this champion as we thought. <laughs> and it's gonna draw a kill for Lazaro. And now with Meganar, you can actually get a double kill. Dodges out those Shark Eyes. Get away from the wall up. Time Cat able to help out. Shark Eye doesn't have another dive. Doesn't even have flash. A flash forward though and a slam against the wall. As that is a stun rally of dream shutdown. For Lazaro, as it's a two for zero in the top side, Lopachinsky getting shards to the Ooh. face. Eats one one more time. Still, though, big win for the Condors on the top lane. Tally on his namesake, Talia, there, able to kind of try and even things up a little bit. But in orbital, we were talking about the fact that Lazaro needs to start popping off, and he is starting to do that in a blind pick matchup, by the way. Sure, I do think Nara is the winning side of this matchup, but Animosity knew what he was playing into, said, hey, I can beat this with a Cassante and Lazaro showing him, no, you can't. It's something that also rightfully needs to happen. Uh, Condors, we want that extra piece. And now on the bot side, we're seeing some more. Fable actually flashing in, though. Saying, hey, we got to get a kill. And maybe that was the wrong move. <laughs> it looks like you just got your bot laying there killed. Lazy Time Cat gets one to their name. But Andrew, the main recipient of Fable's life. No, 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 no. I'm not putting that on Fable. Handy Taco had the option not to press the kill <laughs> instinct. And you chose to go in into a CC bot and a TP you knew was going to bring damage, whether it be Lazaro or Lazy Time Cat. Lazy Time Cat now 2, 2, and 1. And as a Vex, you've got to be happy that you're picking up these kills. Your job is to be that assassin. Oh. Uh. That's a Tali? <laughs> Tali said hello, and honestly, big stop by Karami, because they're looking to try and fight the smolder on the bot side. Take a look. It yeah. is Shark Eye diving for the light, but Tali is the one that we're actually oh. worried about. Fable still being alive, and Andrew is actually grouping with the rest of the team, but there is a death that we are wondering. A shot back as Lopez is just going to turn on Fable's life. Honestly, though, a support for ADC. It's a dub. That way that you look at it. Lopachinsky, though, says it's not worth. We want a little bit more. Shark Eye now caught on the flip side. Karami, though, without any mana means that another sun can't really come down. Lopachinsky running for their life. A few more damage pieces could be oh. there on knockup just at the crucial time, though. As it's going to be the pin missiles to come out here. Handy Taco. Okay. Pretty handy with that Q. And now Lazy oh. Time Cat will go down. Oh, their like time this. is up. The cat is dead. Shut down for the Kaisa. I don't know what they put in this particular taco, but it's taken out the cat. <laughs> and unfortunately, I mean, Lazy Time Cat was doing so well. You were getting fed, and all yeah. of a sudden, Handy Taco out of nowhere. Now, four, two, and one. Before the Mirror Mana is complete, before the Ludens Companion is complete, before the big power spike for Kaisa is scheduled to come in. And IWU Sword, it looked like they were slipping a little bit, but they are firmly trying to reestablish themselves as being in the lead. And this is actually where the dangerous part comes in. We talked about Lazaro in game number one on the Orn needing to break away from the rest of the game. I'd actually say in game two, or break away from the lane to get with, this, with the rest of the team. I'd actually say that needs to happen this time as well, but for a vastly different reason. Lazaro has, I would say, a decent chunk of damage in their back pocket that, I could, that could actually turn some of these team fights as well. You kind of want to unlock the Gnar to come in with this big wall of, with this big yeah. Gnar ult, and really deny the opportunity because, remember, Sword are all going in. Who better to stop than a giant Gnar? 
Well, I think a Cyclone could stop them. Like, a big gloom yeah, kill from true. Lazy Time Cat could stop them. Yeah. But I agree. I think Lazaro being as... Having the lane he had, having the early game he had, would be massive for the team if he was actually there for these fights. Though Pachinski just going after Handy Taco right now. I don't think he's got enough oh. damage to quite solo this out. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Ouch. Oh, oh do it. Do it. Do okay. it. Yes! Yeah! Oh, okay. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> I, I totally didn't cheer for that time, Cat. You know, that's on you. I definitely didn't say anything about that. Uh, uh, secret fan of uh, <laughs> I, I'm a secret. I'm a secret fan of uh, Lee Syndrome. Is what I'm a fan of. Okay, <laughs> listen. A skill shot lands. I follow skill shot whether or not it's under enemy tower. That's fair. I play with Orbital. Can't confirm. This. Hey, hey. The hiccup though. Condors are still going to be able to go for this dragon. Pick themselves up the second Drake. Animosity and Shark Dive now punishing Lazaro, who's mini Jeez. and will not get a chance at all to go mega. I like this call. Honestly, one ocean, not the worst to give over, and you get more kills in the back pocket. Remember, Shark Eye was one of the big reasons we actually saw a massive swing in some of these major fights. Shark Eye, one of the main recipients of staying alive oh. in that bot side kerfuffle of four. <laughs> and yeah, we, we have. That's also why I'm just watching, because I'm pretty sure I know who wins. And it is going to be an... Oh, but the difference is, Handy Taco wanted a piece as well, but they die okay. in sense of the one for one trade. Meanwhile, on the top side, two towers fall to the Rift Herald. Uh, sort of just like, yo, let's play every aspect of League of Legends all at the same time. Death, life, and towers. I mean, that's what they did in game one. No, like they were just everywhere all at once doing all the things. Yeah. And that's what accelerated the game in their favor. This time, though, Condors feel like they are able to match beat for beat. And I 1% I want to highlight for the Condors right now is Karami. We've seen quite a few times now, 8kp. That is the highest on the side of the Condors. Karami is making this action happen. And just the way you're finding the picks and the way now twice Karami has stopped Tally mid Weaver's wall in order to try and save the team. No, not, not Andrew. Our dear observer, <laughs> Karami. That's the person we're talking about. That's the person who's popping off. And that's the person I'm still looking Karami. at for Condors to find a team fight win. Down, down to the right. Uh, down to the right. Go, Karami. <laughs> the one with the giant shield. That's actually... Oh, well, not two shields. One shield. Yeah, the big... Okay, <laughs> no, never mind. The other big guy. All right. Yeah, there we yeah, go. There. Hey! All right, we got Karami. Karami the big... It's true. I love this R5. And I, and I say it all the time. You hear me all the time, RMC, but I'm sure some people do. Uh, there are some moments where... The R5 needs to have impact. So far, Karami is doing that. It's already looking miles better than game one. However, we are now cresting into that mid-game. Remember, this is where Sora started to accelerate the game. Yes, they had a massive lead last time. This time, it might not be that 6k. It's still 3 or 2.5. That's more than enough to cause some action. Straight up in the air as Karami goes up, straight down, and then Catch. all the way around as Fable is the one almost caught, but getting away as that's also a shadow stolen away. Time God doesn't have that old Lobachinsky though. Has down Hitty Taco, who once oh. again is in the dangerous zone, but the shove, the size of the shove on the Unraveled Earth is just too good. On the flip, a tower dive occurs as down goes Vex. In this chase and scuffle, Condors are drawn away. When you chase Karami? two prey, you may lose all, but Andrew may oh. get the damage. Shark the stacks are there, but not the kills, and Shark Eye wants to go back in. A good shove against the walls. The Meganar turns it around. Shark Eye dies down. You get the kill on oh, one. And Andrew doesn't have enough to finish off the kills. At the end of the day, Sword is going to live. And they're going to grab Karami's life as well. Andrew, the last oh. one to fall. As a TP just for show. Animosity and Sword win an extended team fight. Handy Taco and Tally. No health, no problem. They just dodged everything after the initial upfront birth and, and with the fractions of health they had overall they were still able to pump out the damage secure the turret sec well actually they didn't get the dragon dragon wasn't on the table they were just fighting for turrets across the board and iwu sword this was the explosion we're waiting for in the mid game and it's happening now i love it sword are proving hey mid early game a little bit rocky a little bit rocky we still come out with a lot of the same kills shark i once again at six k 
kills. Disgusting scoreboard. This time last was uh, unkillable. One death, really not that bad. Fable still running interference. His animosity haven't been tempered down in this top side. One, one and one. So very, very strong. Karami realizing they're in a little bit of a dangerous spot. Mom is being called in, but it barely does anything. Karami is just shredded. Where they stand. Animosity still holding off two, by the way. Yeah. As out goes Andrew and Lazara Lopachinsky realize they're in trouble. A draw yeah, in sure. of the Monkey King may go down as Handy Taco watches Lazaro oh. get beaten up. Animosity gets even more revenge for top lane and baron is up and on the table orbital if the swords are looking to try and go for it now it is a little bit dicey lopachinski does have cyclone and i mean animosity is not at the healthiest but really if you can't find the squishies then i think sword will be fine so i love that fable right now is kind of bodyguarding and making sure nobody can kind of walk through that river they know where lazy time cat is they know where who's that other person lopachinski as well in the mid lane are mm -hmm. so you know how to hit them off at least he got something it's a drop in the bucket very very minimal but there were bounties available true and you get a slight bit of gold back it always feels bad losing an objective and getting nothing at least you get something now you can go on a warding mission you can start dropping some wards maybe look to fight or steal the upcoming dragon to put yourself on soul point. Either that or find Shark Eye. That's the other call. Shark Eye fairly tanky. Loba Chansey stunned up though. And again, dropped extremely low. This is going to be a problem. Sandy Taco gets the bloom. Crit Bloom is going to hold out. But remember, this is a little bit of a dead fight. 4v5. And that's going to be a stop. Shards are not going to do enough work as Tali falls as well. And Amasi wasn't there to body block. And it is a big win for the side of the Condors. Now, they are going to get away with low HP bars. But they grab three kills. I call that a massive win. Yeah. Now, the question is. Uh -oh. Will they survive? They are playing with fire and animosity is very, very tanky. Mm -hmm, but this is not ADC, Handy Taco. This is APC oh. throwing out those Ws. But guess what? Animosity says, I am the death. This is why you don't allow the burn to come through. The stacks are real as animosity takes it all and grabs that triple kill. You're right, Orbital. Handy Taco ain't the AD carry. That's animosity. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Has a bunch of oh, do it. Just do it. Oh! <laughs> You see, and, and this is why I wasn't that concerned when I saw Animosity step up. Right. Because I don't think they actually could have killed Animosity unless they fully committed. And if they do, it's dangerous. Handy Taco, though, might go down do to it. a buff. <laughs> <laughs> I, so Handy Taco's gotten a little bit crazy in games one and two. Had a, real, a lot of silly moments, I would say. It would have been the icing on the cake to die to red buff. That would have been like <laughs> the icing on the cake for Handy Taco. Dragon's currently being taken. It'll be evening up the score. Two dragons to two as sword closing in on nigh a 7.5k lead. Now, here's the silver lining in the clouds for Condors right now. The Baron buff was not used to push whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So IWU sure. sword did pick up Baron, but they will get no turrets off the back of it. In fact, Condors were actually the ones to find a turret uh, on the initial Baron take. Now, it, it's a very thin silver lining and the economy is not good for silver right now so condors still need to find some other way to get their gold and actually start to scale andrew last i checked was at 171 stacks and that was probably about two minutes ago so we're probably still not quite at the point where smolder is going to be the big carry for the condors mm -mm. Uh, andrew sitting on 214 not terrible still wish there were more at oh my god you want to talk about sacks? You want to talk about empowerment? Tammy Taco with the original, the OG empowered abilities. That W decimating people. He did die in the last fight, so your Magi Soul Seal is only sitting on two. But, you know, we don't really start talking about that until you hit about ten. It's going to be a jump Ooh. over as you get the catch. Are you kidding me? Of all champions, you find Andrew. Andrew able to get over the wall to safety. And it looks like you got a root on the back side. It will be animosity to fall. A little bit too far of a dive. Tali getting caught here. Time Cat goes on Ooh. in. Immediately CC'd up. Has to go into the Zanyas, but the rest of the team is here to back him up. Uh -huh. Looks like they can do it, but again, the AoE is just too strong. Shark Eye goes in as well. It looks like they almost walked in one by one, but Shark Eye still lives. Handy Taco and Tali still pumping out the damage. Look at these seismic shoves, though, Tali. And it's Aaliyah main for nothing as this Handy Taco on a rampage. Shark Eye gets a knockup on Lazaro as they go into Mini Nar. And for all the blood, for all the glory, it's going to be a two for two. Two pages, orbital, eight pages now in that book as Tally able to find some kills in that fight. And critically, Andrew 
is now past the 225 stack mark. We saw the execution thresholds start showing up on the health bar. But even though he's hit that critical point, I want to highlight in that last fight, Andrew, besides the initial burst onto Animosity under that turret, wasn't actually able to participate in the fight. The range issue we were talking about is starting to come through. And sure, you do a lot of damage, but can you actually get close enough to do that damage without getting popped before that? I like that statement. You can do the damage, but can you do the damage? That's what you really got to look at. It's such yeah. a... It's such a fray, and it's too real. Right now, Andrew needs to have the opportunity afforded to them. Two and a half minutes on Dragon, so plenty of time to farm back up. Continue to try and hit that execution mark ever higher. And also just try and get Vision down in your own jungle. Take a look at this. On the bot side, Sword are completely warded out around this Dragon side. Uh, the entirety of the bottom side of Condor's jungle is lit up like a Christmas tree. However, on the top side... That's where Condors are putting their focus. Warding going down, defending against some invasive wards that could go down for Baron in a minute. Yeah, and I'm still not sold that they can actually team fight for this Baron. So if they're setting down vision, what I want to see from Condors is actually more aggressive vision and try and catch Sword in rotation and not try and play passively and catch them like in your own side of the jungle. Lopachinski mm. getting hit by a depth charge. We know how this goes. We see a lot of this aggression. It looks like it's going to work again. Huge fear comes out though as they are actually shred TP on okay. top. And it looks like the tanks aren't as strong as they thought they were. Animosity TPs are actually holds pretty dang strong because it was Lazar to jump into the mix. Sword actually have to give away this fight, but needless to say, Tali is still shoving in the bottom lane. Yeah, split goal from IWU Sword. I, I don't know if they were banking on a Weaver's Wall coming in, but you opted to go into that fight 4v5, and there was literally a missing ping onto Tali, and Tali just did not move. Mm -hmm. So I assume that the comms are like, hey, let me just sit here and take this. And because of that, that's the two tanks dead for IWU Sword as the Baron spawns. This is the best shot the Condors have right now at trying to take this. Instead, they're deciding discretion is the better part of Valor, and they are not going to engage on this Baron. Nope. Too much poke. Plus, Shark Eye's alive. Shark Eye is still pretty dang tanky. Oh, okay. <laughs> now we know why we are not seeing that chance. Now the Weaver's Wall comes in just to keep him here, and as long as Sword play long range, you can hurl th swords at people. It's like a, it's like a, I, I think it's considered a little bit of bludgeoning damage or so, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> they all scatter to the winds. Condor is running for their lives. But it is just going to be a hold. Remember, they can't give up too much space. They know the Baron's a priority target, and they have all five members up. Yeah, and for the side of IWU Sword, they're actually starting this right now. Mm -hmm. Poke lands. Oh, that really snuck in. Time cat now down to about 60% HP. If you dive in, it's going to be a problem. Animosity running interference, Baron down to about um, 2k HP. It's going to be smited away. It's going to be oh, taken in the no. death of bounds as well. Lazar has to run away, but the rest of Sword are chasing in. The melts are going through as Condors are taken out of the sky. Lopachinski running for their life, oh, but a snipe oh. from Shark Eye ends their life killing spree for their namesake as Tali is 8, 3, and 13. 20 stacks on the Magi's as Illinois Wesleyan University Sword look to move on to the semifinals. 20 seconds on Andrew, and I'm going to be honest, Andrew isn't going to be able to stop this, even with Lazaro helping out. Their saving grace is that the wave is taking a while to come in. Lazaro, if you die, oh, you're that game. Oh, that's death again. You don't give Tali to Leah and expect <laughs> to win the game. It is Sword to carry on in one of the most one-sided quarterfinal matches we've seen. It will be the Sword squad moving on 2-0. Orbital, you, you call it one of the more one-sided matches we've seen. I want to give huge props to IWU Sword for making it seem that way. And it's all in the early game. This team, just from the very get-go, in all the lanes, they know how to...